Hey, it's Jay, and you're watching Plasma Channel. Ever seen one of these? These are bug zapper rackets. Inside of them is a circuit that produces about two to 3,000 volts. So today, we're gonna turn this into this, a three volt Tesla coil. These mini coils are awesome, and you're going to learn how to build one quite similar to it. This essentially is a micro version of the classical spark gap Tesla coil. I would highly recommend though that you watch our last episode on Tesla coils. It quickly runs you through how coils work and why each and every part is very important. Once you've done that, let's get straight to it. First, gather your supplies. You're going to need a bug zapper racket, which you can get at home improvement stores, which effectively is our power source. It also contains a capacitor inside we can use, but I recommend buying your own polypropylene capacitors. They're more efficient. You'll also need a roll of 32 gauge enamel copper wire, a four inch section of one inch wide PVC pipe, and very importantly, some electrical tape. I prefer black. But we want our coil to look nice, so we're going to need some separate supplies for the base. Go out and find yourself some quarter inch plexiglass, or you can use some nylon cutting board. Grab yourself four two inch long bolts, and with that, four one inch long nylon spacers. The base is really simple, so let's just go ahead and build that right away. Out of the plexiglass, cut yourself two identical squares, three and a quarter inches by three and a quarter inches. This will make up the top and the bottom of your base. Once you've done that, carefully drill holes in the top and the bottom of all four corners in such a way that you can insert the bolt through the nylon washer and using a nut, tighten it all down. Because now, you've got yourself a beautiful base. Now that we got the base, let's work on the power source. Step one is to take apart the racket and extract the power source. Here's a closer look at your high voltage circuit. You have a high voltage transformer which charges up a capacitor. Uh, and a quick note here real fast, depending on the brand you buy, your circuits might look a little bit differently. The one on the right is from the Stinger brand, which I actually strongly prefer, but either way they perform about the same. The next component we'll work on is the secondary coil. Start out by taking your PVC pipe and drilling two small holes on the end like so. We're going to end up threading the enamel wire through that, which is why we have those holes. And then also, using either a knife or a file, make a very small notch, I don't know if you see it, on the base of your form. Once you've done that, take your enamel wire and thread it through the hole on the side that has the notch on it. That's now the base of your coil. Pull out about six inches, leave it that way, and tape it down. Just like so. Because now it's time to wind it. <laughs> All right, so once you've wound your coil, go ahead and put 10 turns of electrical tape on the base and 10 turns on the top. The base is particularly important because that acts as insulation between where the primary windings will be and the secondary. But you now have your iconic Tesla secondary. Now take the base and drill a hole a quarter of an inch from the edge and insert a bolt. Now attach the secondary. Let's now work on the spark gap. There's probably over a million ways to make a spark gap, so I'm just gonna show you my way. Find yourself some nylon cutting board and cut yourself two identical rectangles like this. Less than an inch tall by three quarters of an inch wide. And drill that hole a quarter of an inch from the top. Now go ahead and thread two matching bolts through those holes. That's it. 
What's great about this design is it is adjustable for voltage, so you can screw out one bolt or screw it in to adjust the power level of the coil. Right, now let's place the spark cap on the base, like so. You can use glue or screws. I choose to do screws and place them 30 millimeters from this edge and 30 millimeters from this edge. Repeat for the other side of the spark gap as well. That's very important because you need no more than one millimeter gap between the bolts. Next up, let's work on the capacitor bank. The capacitors that come built into the circuit boards have too large of capacitance, and quite frankly, I believe their voltage rating to be too low, meaning they're not gonna last very long in Tesla coil use. So we're gonna design our own capacitor bank out of three of these. This is a 3000 volt, two nanofarad polypropylene capacitor. But we're going to end up placing the capacitor bank in the base of the coil. So take your base from earlier with a spark gap on it and place two bolts, 16 millimeters from one edge and 16 millimeters from the other edge. Repeat identically for the other side and make sure it's in this orientation with the spark gap. Those are your contact points for your capacitor bank. For perspective, this is what our capacitor bank is going to look like. Fits between the two support beams and within that distance we have three individual capacitors. So next up, let's drill the holes for the leads of the capacitors. Once you've drilled the holes and inserted the capacitors, they should look like this. Now on the bottom side, go ahead and make sure the end of one lead wrap it around this bolt and the end of another lead wrap it around this bolt. Bend the wires in a zigzag fashion like so, solder these two points, and now you've got a capacitor bank. The last major component, the primary coil. It's a little hard to tell, but the primary coil does have six and a half turns in it, wrapped around and connected to those contact points. So to do that to yours, go ahead and drill holes and place bolts one centimeter from this edge and three centimeters from this edge. And then do as I'm about to do. Once you've wound it and wrapped it, it should look like this. Regardless of brand, we need to prep the power source prior to installation. So desolder the capacitors and in place of them, solder two high voltage leads. Assuming you follow the directions, your circuit should now look like this. You have a three voltage input side and a high voltage output side. And depending on the model, you'll need to glue it or zip tie it or bolt it to the base. But I'll be bolting it to the base in this orientation. Once mounted, it should look something similar to this. The last step before wiring up the coil is to build the top load. To do that, go to a home improvement store and buy a small drawer knob and a one inch washer. Bolt the washer onto the base, wrap the wire around that bolt sticking out because we're gonna end up gluing it on top. That's the last step. And I lied. We have our top load, but we need a counterpoise for the base wire. So wrap that wire around that bolt from earlier and then tuck underneath a layer of aluminum foil tape on the edge. There's our counterpoise. If you've been following along, your build is now complete. The only difference between our coil and my previous coil is this isn't quite wired up yet. So let's get to that. Okay, follow these schematics. The primary circuit is the only thing that actually needs wiring. Our high voltage source connects up directly to the spark gap and the spark gap in turn creates a loop involving the primary coil and the high voltage capacitor. Wiring should end up looking like this. Nice, neat, and very tidy. And all of our contact bolts, like for the primary coil and our capacitor bank, we end up simply just wrapping the wire around those. Now plug her into three bolts and enjoy the show. You can use a screwdriver to adjust your spark gap, which in turn affects your spark length. So put your cool kid glasses on, because now you gotta test the coil. Or three. Thanks for sticking around. Don't forget to subscribe to Plasma Channel. And if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, leave a comment, or feel free to leave a question. We have an active Facebook page, and feel free to check out our other episodes. You stay classy.